everybody! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show! I've had an onslaught of questions lately about the different tools that I use here on the show. Who makes them? Where you can get them? Why do I use them? So I thought it would be great if we did a dedicated video about that subject. But first, this! Thank you all so much and welcome to all of you who are new to the show. Welcome to the Big Crafty Family! <laughs> I wanted to take a quick moment to talk about a few things to do with all of our new subscribers and a couple things that a lot of you who've been watching the show for a while are already familiar with. So for starters, if you're new to the show, if you click on my username, it'll take you to our channel homepage where you can go to the videos tab at the top and you can check out all of the videos we've already done here on the show. We've got over 200 now, and most of them are tutorials. So definitely you're going to want to check that out. As a big special thank you for 70,000 subscribers, we've uploaded two new free patterns to our website. So if you're new to the show, you can check out jadainstitches.com, and there's a cute little tour guide video there on the front page that will show you where to find everything on our channel. But if you've already been there, make sure you pop over to the workshop page and find those two new patterns. We did the moss stitch headband from last week and for those of you who were following us a couple years ago around Halloween, we put up the candy corn amigurumi pattern. So those two new patterns are there for free on our website as a big thank you to all of you. And one last thing, um, if you are new to the show or you don't usually check out the description box below our videos, always make sure you check out the description box. That's that little box directly below the video if you're watching it on the computer or to the side if you're watching it on um, a mobile device. And we often have links to associated videos. So for example, our hat video has the links to the doodads video in it. Um, sometimes we'll put links to videos that we think you might also be interested in that we've done. And we always have the link to our website and to our Etsy shop. And you can always check both of those things out. Just go to the description box, click that show more button, and all that information is there. Okay, all that now being said, let's get into the tools. So the first thing I'm going to talk about today are the yarn needles that I've used on the show. Recently, I've been using this one a lot. It's the large-eyed or a, a pony-eyed or a wool needle. It has a couple of different titles depending on who makes it. The one that I have came from this package. This is an old beaten up package because I bought this about 20 years ago. But it's by H.A. Kid. They still make them. So you can pick these up. I just actually got a package of them. Um, still H.A. Kid. Packaging looks a little different. I picked it up at Walmart just the other day for a girlfriend for her birthday. So that is the wool needle or the pony needle. They have a couple of different names. Um, and you can also find them on the internet. I've recently found them on Amazon and different companies make them, but you just have to Google wool needle or large eyed yarn needle. The other yarn needle I use, uh, a lot of you will be very familiar with this one if you've seen me doing some of the older tutorials. This is a large eyed darning needle and this is just as handy as the other needle but it's not quite as easy to thread with a thicker yarn. Obviously, you can tell the difference. Uh, one has a large loop, the other one has a large or sort of a skinny eye. Benefits and not so benefits. <laughs> this one is really easy to thread up but the yarn falls out of it quickly, obviously, because it's a large hole. This one isn't as easy to thread up, but the yarn tends to stay, so when you're sort of sewing back and forth, the yarn doesn't come out as easily. So I like both, uh, but I have to say, if you're, um, your sight isn't the greatest, or you have a little trouble with dexterity, this is definitely the best needle for threading up and using for yarn. And they both darn just fine, so. <laughs> um, so those are my needles. So the next tool I get asked a lot about are the scissors that I use. And most of you are asking about these super cute little fairy scissors, the little fairy wings. They've got a little face on it. <laughs> she looks like she's flying when you use them. Um, these came from Fabricland. So here in Canada, we have a chain of fabric stores called Fabricland, and they always have 
cute little piles of things on the checkout counter. Um, often they're little scissors or little sewing kits, things that you would use as a seamstress. Uh, my mother-in-law actually picked these up for me a while ago, so um, that's where she got them. But I know they've also been found on the internet. I don't know the name of the people that made them. This didn't come with a package or anything. But I do know that these are embroidery floss scissors. So they're actually meant for embroidery. Um, that's why they've got a very short little snipping deck and they come down to a very fine point so that you can really get in and, and snip tiny little pieces of um, knots and yarn, or I should say thread. These really aren't meant for yarn but they're just so cute, <laughs> that's why I keep them around. The other pair of scissors that I really use, so these are my, my workhorse scissors, these are a pair that fold up. You can find these at dollar stores, uh, almost anywhere that they sell scissors as a, a utensil or a utility tool, so even um, um, like utility stores. These come in a whole bunch of different packages. I've seen them in sewing kits, I've seen them sold on their own. Um, they fold up, they've got a short snipping deck, they're very sharp and they are a little more sturdy than the floss needles. So that's why I really like these. Plus I like that they fold up because I take these everywhere with me. So these are my travel scissors and I know they're not going to accidentally poke through my little travel bag and like, you know, cut something, cut me. So these are my other favorite scissors. The other thing is this cute little measuring tape. I get asked about this a lot. <laughs> Um, it's got inches on one side, it's got the metric system on the other side, which is great. Um, and it's, it's, it's just so darn cute. This is another thing that my mother-in-law found me. And she thinks she also found this at Fabricland. Also don't know who makes these. Um, there was no packaging or anything that came with it. But it's one of those cute little things that you'll find uh, in the corner of, so wherever you would buy fabric, like uh, Fabricland here in Canada. I know in the States you guys have got something called Joann's. I haven't found one yet, but I'd like to go visit one because they sound fantastic. But anyway, uh, usually on the counter where you're checking out, they've got piles of these cute little things, just like my little scissors, um, sort of encouraging you to buy something cute for your accoutrement. Uh, collection and that's where this came from so I can't really <laughs> I can't really help you out other than that's where it came from and it's really cute it's a little measuring tape um, it automatically winds up it's got a little button in the front um, and uh, I don't know you know what you could probably find a completely uncovered one of these because I do have one of those lying around and we could probably make a cute little cover for it so maybe we'll do that on the show huh? thumbs up if you want to see me try and make one of these for a measuring tape cover <laughs> Last thing I'm going to talk about are my crochet hooks. So most of you have access to crochet hooks, which is why you're able to follow the tutorials in the first place. <laughs> but I have a whole bunch of different kinds, and they all have fairly different uses. So the first one I'm going to show you is the one that you usually see. It's this one or a gold one. I use this one a lot. It's a regular 4.25 millimeter crochet hook, and it's aluminum. So this is an aluminum crochet hook, and this is by the Boy company, B-O-Y-E, or yeah, boy, I think it's called boy. I don't think you pronounce the E on the end, but anyway. <laughs> they make a whole bunch of different colored aluminum hooks, and they make for a really pretty set. They're really smooth. I like them. I've never had any complaints, and I've certainly never had any breaks. So these are usually the ones that I reach for first. The next one that you may have seen a lot of are, um, I occasionally have wooden hooks. These are actually bamboo. These are also really, really smooth. They're really, really strong. And they kind of warm up in your hand in a different way than the aluminum hooks do. I love these. They're lighter than the aluminum hooks. Um, they're smooth. And because they're not metal, they're good to travel with. I don't know, I know air, all airlines are a bit different, but I have been able to travel in the past with a wooden crochet hook in my carry-on as opposed to a metal one. I would still check with your airline before you go traveling. But um, because they're not metal, they usually don't freak people out as much. <laughs> But they are smooth and they are really nice. They come in a whole bunch of different sizes. Um, and I have gotten all of mine at Walmart. So all of my bamboo sticks I've gotten at Walmart. I don't really know the name of them. I don't usually keep the packaging around for very long. But um, I know a lot of different companies make bamboo hooks. So um, these ones I got at Walmart. And my boy, I should also mention, I got those at Walmart as well. The next hook you've probably seen me use are some plastic ones. These are Susan Bates hooks. 
Um, they're lightweight. I think that's part of the reason that they've tried making a series in plastic. They're lightweight. They're comfortable. Um, sometimes they have a little bit of a catchy uh, knob, but you can just file it down using a bit of sandpaper or a nail file, so that's not really an issue if you have a bit of a scratchy bit on them. Uh, but I have had friends tell me that they've been working away with their crochet um, and their plastic hook and it's snapped right in the middle of a project. Probably due to the fact that their tension was really tight or maybe they were just really frustrated that day. But the plastic hooks have been known to snap. So these are great if you've got sort of some arthritis and maybe you can't, you can't hold anything too, too um, heavy in your hands. Um, but I like them just because the bigger the hook, it, you want it to be lighter. You don't want it to be um, very, very, like a metal hook on a size 12 or 15 millimeter would just be like trying to haul around a sword. So I much prefer a plastic hook when you get to like the bigger hook size. And I've got one or two others to show you. So this is also an aluminum hook, but it's by Arrow. Arrow also makes a lot of knitting needles. I think Boy makes knitting needles too. I think Susan Bates makes knitting needles. A lot of these people make both. Um, these are the first ones I ever bought. So I was buying arrow crochet hooks and knitting needles before I had hand, my hands on anything else. Um, and that might be kind of a uniquely Canadian thing, I'm not sure. But I purchased all of my arrow hooks and needles at um, the v um, uh, chain of stores. They're like a little mini department store. So for those of you who have never heard of the v they're like a chain of department stores. And they're like a small miniature old-fashioned Walmart, but they carry a lot of this. So I don't know if this is sort of a Canadian thing or not, but Arrow, they make both and I like them, they're aluminum and I've never had any problems with them, they're not itchy, scratchy, lightweight, they're really good hooks too. And one last one, so this is a wooden hook that I have, and I'm going to show you a close-up of this, but it's got a point at the end of it and a little hole through it, because this is actually called a nook, <laughs> so it's supposed to be a half crochet hook, half knitting needle came in a collection of three called um, the Nook, and the idea is that you're kind of half crocheting, half knitting with them. I usually only use them for crochet, but specifically, uh, they're also a darker bamboo wood, but they're really smooth, and I like that they taper to that point, because every once in a while, as you know, if you're trying to pick out a little something or uh, maybe open up a little space when you're crocheting, having that little extra point at the end is really kind of handy. So um, if you come across these, I'm not actually even sure where they come from, Michael's I think, um, they're handy. They're a fun little crochet hook to have and I like just that little tapered point at the end because it can be handy when you're trying to pick out a little end if you're trying to undo something that you've done. So nooks, those are handy too. One last tool, I have plenty of knitting needles and I thought I would talk today about short knitting needles. So if you're just getting into knitting, these are really fun and handy to have around. So you can do small projects on these, um, like a scarf or small squares if you're going to work them into a bigger blanket. Um, you can do actually quite a lot on shorter needles, but these ones are specifically made for doing thick yarn based projects like a scarf in a hurry. So they're short, so they're a lot easier to manipulate and they also added bonus they fit into the pencil case that I'm currently using as my crochet hook carry case so I always have these with me just in case I want to work out a cute little knitting project um, they're red heart they're lightweight and they're pretty colors so I'm a sucker for anything colorful if they make a tool and it's got colors on it I will probably buy it <laughs> Uh, but I really like these. I like the big stoppers on the end, and I like how the um, the sizing is clearly printed at the top of them. And I like how short they are. It makes them really easy to maneuver. And if you're a commuter and you're sort of sitting on a bus or a, a train or something, you're not going to knock anybody next to you <laughs> with your long needles. So that's another reason I like these. And these I picked up at Michael's. So those are by Red Heart, and you can also order them online off the Red Heart website. What are your favorite tools? And where did you find yours? And who are your favorite tool makers if you have them? I'd love to know. Leave me a comment down below. And I'm in Canada, so I know that places vary all over the world. I know that not everybody gets their, their supplies from the same stores or even maybe the same way. I know a lot of people order online. Um, some people maybe get their stuff just from friends. I would love to ask all of you who are not in Canada to post down below 
where you typically buy your crochet supplies and what kind of an experience you've had with that because other people from other countries will hopefully read that and it'll help all of us out. So if you know where to go and get stuff wherever it is that you're local, post me a comment down below. A, I'm interested and B, I know it'll help somebody else out and that would be super great. We are a big crafty family after all, so let's help each other out. <laughs> And that is it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We will see you again soon on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.